brackish water pikes are an absolutely incredible sport fish. In this short film, we're going to take a closer look at what makes them so special and the many steps that are being taken to ensure great fishing for many future generations. Oh, Mr. Oh, that was good looking, Mark. Ah, come on. Nice. The brackish water pikes face a lot of different challenges, but luckily a lot of steps are being taken to ensure that the populations can grow. Last but not least, I'm going to show you how we fishermen can correctly handle and release fish to ensure a high survival rate. Put her back. <laughs> the brackish water pikes are one of my favorite fishes to catch. They can get big, mean, and aggressive, and they can also be moody and a challenge to catch, but that's a challenge I gladly accept. The areas that the brackish water pikes in are spectacular scenery in nature. Super varied, uh, a lot of different areas in the Baltic area. Where we are here in Southern Sealand, uh, there's a lot of varied fishing. And one thing that kind of goes again is that it's shallow and clear, and that just makes for a really spectacular and visual fishing. The pike in these areas face a lot of different challenges. Scientists believe that one of the main reasons for the decline in the pike populations is the lack of suited areas for them to breed and for their juvenile to grow up, the so-called nursery habitats. Other threats like uh, influx of water with high salinity, commercial fishing, predators like seal and cormorants, all are different factors that can add to the decline in the pike populations. Luckily, a lot is being done to help these pike populations. Here in Southern Sealand, scientists and researchers are working together with local fishermen to tag and release pike that's giving a lot of important knowledge about growth rates, etc. The municipalities and fishing Sealand are working together to build the so-called pike factories. These are flooded areas where the pike can spawn and the juvenile pike can grow. Many of these salt marshes, wetlands, and natural areas that are important pike spawning habitats, they've been drained and are dry now, and therefore recreating these areas is very, very important. A new breeding program is also taking place where roe and sperm is taken from mature pikes that are released again and this roe and sperm is combined to uh, raise fish fry in tanks that then can be released into these pike factories. Right here in southern Sealand, several steps have been taken to ensure sustainable sports fishing. And in several areas, commercial and net fishing has been banned and only catch and release fishing with fishing rods is allowed for the pike. Along with this, Fishing Sealand is helping by producing signs, folders, and films to help educate fishermen on rules, conduct, and better handling of pike. Many of these efforts are happening with help from volunteers, the local South Sealand Brackish Water Fishing Club and the Danish Sports Fishing Association. Watch out, watch out. Aye. Aye. I'd like to give you some simple but important guidelines on how you can handle and release the pike that you've caught. One thing that's important is to use tackle that's sturdy enough so that you can fight the pike as short time as possible, get them in fast, and release them fast. It's a lot easier to get the hooks out if it's a barbless hook. You can buy barbless hooks and you can also just pinch the barbs with a pair of pliers on all your regular hooks and lures. One of the best ways to handle a pike, no matter whether you're fishing from a boat, from the shore, or wading, is by grabbing them by the gills. Uh, you go in right behind the gill plates on one side and slide your hand up. This here is the gill grab, where you're in front of the top gill. So you slide your hand in here, and then let it glide all the way up. And then you can hold them sturdy with one hand and use your hand and pliers in the other hand to get the hooks out. You can grab the pike by the gills without any gloves on, uh, but you will get some little cuts and, and scars in your bare hands. 
I like to use a, a pair of thin carpenter or work gloves like this, and you can also buy fishing gloves made for the, for the purpose. When you hold the fish up, make sure that you hold it horizontal. Nice, well-built, strong fish. Because uh, if you hold it vertical like this, it can damage the bone structure and the backbone of the fish. The most important tool for handling and releasing pike is your pliers. And I'd say you can never have too many pliers. Uh, there's all different kinds of, of regular fishing pliers that also have wire cutters. I like pliers that have a sort of a bend in them so you really can get far into the throat of the fish if it's uh, swallowed the hooks. Tools like this one are really cool, especially for fly fishing. Uh, I like these models. Here's also a different kind that goes down and kind of grabs the hook. And uh, I like to bring an assortment of pliers uh, when I go fishing for pike. It's also a good idea to bring some sturdy wire cutters like this that you easily can clip the hook. Sometimes that's easier than removing the hook is just to simply cut it. Also, if you should get a hook stuck in your finger, you'll be really happy that you brought these. It's important that you get your gloves and your hands wet when handling the fish and that you keep the fish in the water as much time as possible. Only lifting it when it's necessary to get the hook out or to get a quick picture. Every now and then, hopefully, you're gonna get a really big fish. Then you'll probably wanna use a net. Uh, and for that, I recommend a big net and a net that's made of rubber material like this uh, that doesn't hurt the fish's skin. Personally, I believe you can be really, really excited about catching a big pike without necessarily knowing exactly what it measures and what it weighs. If you do wanna measure the length of the fish, a great way to do it is with a mat like this. Uh, it's soft and it protects the pike. You can measure the length of it and make sure you get a mat like this wet before you place the pike on it on a flat surface. Several companies make these mats. Some of them also double as uh, a waistling, so you both have the length, but you can also place the pike inside it and use it to weigh the fish if you want to weigh the fish in it. Um, there's also just little regular uh, carp nets or pike nets like these that you can put the fish in. Then you can hold them in the water while you get out your camera and uh, your weight and all that stuff. One of the, Something like this uh, is also a great way to have the big pike in. These float here so you can have it down in the water uh, and then lift it up and weigh the pike in this. If you don't want to buy all this uh, equipment, I would say the mat is super, super important. But in terms of a waist length, a cheap bag from an Ikea like this one uh, can double. Uh, as a wasteling. When the hook is out, you've taken your picture if you want one and the fish is ready to go, don't just toss it back in. You want to gently hold it in the water. You can use the gill grab again on the, on the front and then around the tail, whether it's a small fish or a big fish, hold it in the water, hold it upright, and then wait until it's ready to swim off on its own. Sometimes if it's been a long and exhausting fight, you might need to hold it for a little bit before it swims off on its own. And after that, just enjoy what it looks like when a big pike is released and swims off back in the water because that is about as good as it gets. Hopefully all these initiatives will help secure the pike populations so many generations can experience the thrill of fishing for brackish water pikes.